As a busy VP at a money management firm in Manhattan, 29-year-old Dan McMillan tries to balance work and play. Pretty much just kind of an average guy, uh, working hard, and, uh, you know, getting along like everyone else. But life changed dramatically for Dan one summer night. He woke up in the hospital with a face he didn't recognize. <laughs> if you knew me, you wouldn't have even uh, recognized me, you know. Uh, big open gash right here. Um, my mouth was kind of almost like hanging off. Dan suffered a concussion, a fractured nasal cavity, shattered bones in his face, and a deep laceration near his chin that took hundreds of stitches to close. I was just thinking the worst at that point that, um, you know, looking at my mouth that, you know, maybe I'd never be able to talk again. A day later, he met Dr. Monica Tadros, a facial plastic surgeon with an extensive background in reconstructive surgery. When I first met Dan, he was transferred to me from an outside hospital. It was reported that he came in, his face was essentially filleted open. It was very serious, actually. In my opinion, just judging by the trauma that Dan had, he definitely was assaulted. The types of fractures that he had, I typically see with car accidents. And so you get shattering of so many bones in the skull. The types of lacerations he has on his face was so precise and sharp that it looks like it was done with the blade of a knife. These lacerations severed a nerve and left Dan with no feeling in parts of his lip and chin. Dr. Tadros operated on Dan immediately to stabilize his injuries. A fracture in his sinus cavity was repaired, and his shattered forehead was reconstructed using a mesh titanium plate. This procedure laid the groundwork for his upcoming operation. I think the hardest part has been the last two months. I think now, you know, I'm starting to just come to grips with it and just not letting it get me down as much. Dan, hi. How you doing? Great. Have a seat. Huh? My biggest hope is that restoring Dan back to his prior appearance will allow him to move on and to not constantly be reminded every time he looks in the mirror of a really unfortunate day. To do this, Dan will undergo a massive reconstruction. His injured face will be repaired using parts from his own body. Cartilage from his ear will be used to build up his crushed nose. To restore feeling in his face, a nerve from his leg will be grafted into his chin. And fat from his abdomen will be used to fill in deep scars. Dr. Tadro starts where there is no injury, in Dan's ear. The ear is actually a rich source of cartilage, which can be harvested without changing the patient's appearance or ability to hear. He's got a nice big piece of cartilage. Lucky us. I'll help us rebuild this part of his nose. The cartilage is temporarily set aside. Dr. Tadros now turns her attention to the severed nerve in Dan's mouth. She opens up the chin and searches for the injured nerve. She needs to extract the dead part of the nerve and expose the ends. Later, she'll attach a healthy nerve from Dan's leg to bridge the gap, reconnecting this damaged nerve. Essentially, what we're doing is we're just drilling out the nerve, uh, allowing it to mobilize so that we have a little more length, and making sure that it's a hardy portion of the nerve. This is a great candidate. I had a ruler. Dr. Tadros measures to see how much nerve she'll need for a successful graft. Okay, five centimeters or so. The graft will come from the sural nerve in Dan's leg, the nerve that provides feeling to some of his toes. Dan may lose some sensation in this area, but in exchange, he could regain feeling in his face. The next step is critical. Nerves must be carefully grafted, or parts of Dan's face could be left permanently numb. 